Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Oristani. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Geltor. And uh, we make money by designing, a building, and selling proteins that are used to define the texture of consumer products. And today, uh, I actually want to start to tell you a, a really quick story about cheese. Uh, so people, people absolutely love cheese. Um, and, and we make cheese today by turning milk uh, using, um, uh, into cheese using a protein called chymosin. Uh, and the chymosin um, is, is used to convert a protein called casein uh, in, in a very important aspect of making it from the liquid product into the solid that we all enjoy. Uh, and for thousands of years, uh, we've actually used cow guts uh, to source our chymosin. Uh, and that worked pretty well uh, for, for quite a long time. Uh, but in, in the 1970s, uh, a couple of things happened. Um, one was that the growing demand for a protein to feed a growing population just you know, simply couldn't match our ability to slaughter young cows. Um, the other thing that happened was uh, this thing called biotechnology got invented just a couple of miles away from here. Uh, and when those two realities uh, on the technology side and in the marketplace collided. Uh, you know, steel fermenters uh, full of bacteria that made uh, this enzyme started springing out of the ground. Uh, and today, 90% uh, of the cheese that's made on this on this earth is produced using uh, bacteria uh, to make uh, this this enzyme that that has really changed the way this single consumer product has uh, has been distributed. Um, so. Cheese isn't the only thing that's been touched by this technology. Uh, the, the medicines that we need, uh, the products that we use almost every day, um, and other uh, foods and beverages have been touched by biology. And the common thread throughout all these use cases is that essentially um, biotechnology has copy and pasted enzymatic activity or biological activity from one organism into another. Uh, and a couple of years ago, my co-founder and I, we were both wrapping up our PhDs at Princeton. And what we want to understand was, can we actually make better products? Uh, can we deliver new functionalities like texture, like flavor, like color, um, using proteins and by building a platform that could, instead of just copying and pasting, move to a paradigm that was more reminiscent of design, build, and test. Actually make ingredients that could deliver things that you couldn't extract from the gut of a cow, for example. Uh, and that's, that's exactly what we've done over the past two and a half years. Um, we have started by you know, making a really rigorous platform for designing uh, particular proteins for specific applications. And then we move those designs into hosts. Uh, hosts that can scale from you know, the bench top in a lab, which has been described earlier today, uh, into fermentation that are in the hundreds of thousands of liters in scale. Uh, we then you know, pay these microbes uh, with carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen to build um, our products and purify them. Uh, and in the end, formulate these into consumer products. Uh, and these go into things like foods, beverages, uh, cosmetic ingredients, as well as some technical applications. Uh, our first texture vector is collagen, um, and we, we love collagen. Uh, collagen is so well understood that it's almost boring from a scientific perspective. Uh, it's everywhere. It is the most abundant protein in all animals. Um, the market use cases are also quite well understood. Collagen as an ingredient alone is about a $4 billion market. Um, we also need it. Uh, and there isn't an acceptable plant-based substitute for collagen-based ingredients. Uh, and one of the key things that we set out to understand was, you know, how can we avoid competing with a pea, right? Uh, people love plants, um, and, and peas and other plants are really good at doing certain things, but what are those key functionalities that plants just can't deliver um, and can't deliver in a meaningful way at the scale that's required for consumer goods? And then finally, you know, we're, we're scientists and engineers, and, um, you know, there's, there's no, you know, je ne sais when it comes to collagen and gelatin, uh, people buy it because it has a very specific mechanical feature. Uh, in the case of making gummy bears and stuff like that, it's called bloom strength. This is a, a real thing that you can measure. And at the end of the day, that's what our customer actually pays for. Uh, it is a quantitative trait of a material. Uh, and that's the kind of stuff that gets us excited. Okay, uh, this is a movie uh, that's going to show you the horrifying way that gelatin is made. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but one of the other really attractive aspects of collagen is, much like in the case of cheese making, uh, the process of building collagen is uh, is truly revolting. Um, so no one has a romantic notion of you know extracting chymosin from the gut of a young pig. And in a much similar way, uh, when people learn about the way that uh, collagen and gelatin is sourced today, um, they're actually really excited about embracing technological solutions to accelerating the development of better food products that can be made more consistently. Uh, so this is kind of the, the polished food product. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to skip through this because I want to touch on a couple more things. But 
the headline is that we use pig waste and animal waste to actually extract the materials. So this is what our factory looks like. Um, this is our first product. We're selling it to cosmetic manufacturers, uh, particularly in Asia Pacific today. Uh, we're also developing an, uh, uh, food and beverage applications. Those are some gummies and marshmallow prototypes that we have built in our lab. Uh, and these are the, the value propositions that uh, we really engage with our customers in. The headlines are that you can control the material properties of the proteins that you're making. And again, that's what people care, care about. Uh, the process requires far fewer land and water inputs and produce fewer greenhouse gases. Uh, and as a supply chain solution, uh, you really can't do better than biological manufacturing. Uh, we see the future as the combination of the best SynBio enabled ingredients, the best plant-based ingredients, and the best clean meat products. And I'd be really excited to talk to you about that vision in a couple minutes. Thanks. So I guess talk a little bit about how what you're doing is unique to you and your, your co-founder and your company and how you compete against these massive organizations that would love to be able to do this as well. Yeah. Um, so uh, the way that we think about um, uh, kind of the, our vector of competition is really focusing on uh, designing for and building specific mechanical properties with the ingredients that, that we're manufacturing. Uh, the traditional approach and the approach that most folks have taken is basically identifying molecules that exist in nature and then really working hard over the course of decades in some cases to essentially recapitulate their structure perfectly. Because people have this idea that if I can build it just the way that it exists in the skin of a cow um, or, or in this uh, root of a plant, um, then it'll do the thing that I want. Um, what, what they have lost in that way of thinking is the opportunity to search the tree of life, um, search uh, the design space of these materials and actually build for the functionality that you want um, as opposed to kind of settling for what we have used in the past. Um, and and that's, that's the main difference in the way that we think about these things. And then we protect it through IP. <laughs> so I get that there are many revolting elements of uh, some of the food that we put in our bodies, but do consumers know and care about this uh, since you're not selling to them? Yeah. Um, so when they find out, they care. Um, right now, there is a, a pretty remarkable campaign happening in Germany uh, that has put some of the largest confectionery manufacturers um, in the world um, uh, under tremendous pressure to change the source of, in this case, uh, the gelatin that they use in, in their gummy snacks. Um, this has uh, created a huge tension because they're not willing to compromise on the mouthfeel of the products that they make uh, that have been in the marketplace for 80, 90, sometimes 100 years. Um, but uh, because of the changing demands in the consumer marketplace, they they know that the, the days um, are numbered for their existing options. Uh, so when customers learn, um, th there is a big change. The other uh, thing that uh, our partners have been excited about is the opportunity to actually like you know tell a story with these ingredients. Um, biological manufacturing and and just building things with synthetic biology has given people a new medium for storytelling in consumer products that they don't have access to when they're making them with petroleum-based inputs, for example, or from slaughter-based inputs. Uh, so th there, there's a new messaging that's available to them and that the I think really creative leaders in this space have uh, start to think really hard about. What is your business model? How do you make money? Yeah, we make money by selling our ingredients directly to other businesses, um, and we target businesses. Uh, right now, we're, I mean, just to be quite specific, um, we're working directly with businesses in the cosmetic space, OEMs in Korea, Taiwan, Japan, uh, that have $1 to $5 billion in revenue around single collagen, uh, including products. And do you charge a premium over the uh, traditional solutions today, or are you sort of faster, cheaper, um, uh, so we priced it at, at the very top of the market. My, uh, you know, non MBA pricing strategy was asking people how much they pay for collagen ingredients and, uh, matching the most expensive collagen that we could find. Um, and, and that has given us um, a margin as well. Um, so, you know, it really reflects the, the value proposition and it, across the board, what we really focus on is not competing with the opportunities that, um, uh, are really, uh, kind of centered around cost savings initially, at least, um, we really like to find the places where our value around building superior solutions uh, means something to people. Uh, and and that's, that's worked well so far. <laughs>